Good morning everyone, my name is Michael Insen Hermanto and today I am going to present about the genetic diversity and species complex of the Chinese tiger frogs or Hopobatracus rugulosus. This is my presentation outline, so in this presentation there will be four sections. First is the introduction section, the method section, the conclusion section, and the comment section. In the introduction section, I will talk about the description of Hoplobatlacus lugulosus, its population distribution, the species complex of the Hoplobatlacus lugulosus, the previous studies that have been done on this species, the objective of the research article that I find, and the research outline of the article. And then in the method section, I will explain about the SADB phylogeny analysis, the nucleal genes phylogeny analysis, the whole mitochondrial genome analysis, and the ND5 genes and protein analysis. In the conclusion section, I will conclude what I found from the research article, and in the comment section is my comment for the research article. And this is the introduction. In this slide is the description of Hoplobatlacus tugulosus. So this is the taxonomy. It is the family of Diclobulosidae. Its genus is Hoplobatlacus, and its species is Hoplobatlacus tugulosus. In this slide, you can also see the picture of Hoplobatlacus tugulosus. So as you can see in this picture, the dorsal part of its body has green and brown color. In its back, there is black spots like the black dot that in the picture. And when it's mature, we can find it quite large in size. Its SPL can be up to 12 centimeters, and it usually can be found in rice field or other freshwater marshes, like a puddle. In this slide, we can see the population distribution of the Hoplobatlacus tubulosus. So it is native to China, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Thailand, and it is introduced species in Manila, Philippines, and Malaysia. In this slide, we can see the importance of the Hoplobatlacus lugulosus. First, it eats several insect species, so it acts as the population control in its ecosystem, and then it is sold as food in the supermarket, and can also be food for reptiles like snakes or crocodiles. In this picture, we can see the nutrition of 100 gram of frog legs and 100 gram of chicken breast meat. The frog legs is low in calorie, total fat, and cholesterol, so it is healthier than chicken breast meat actually. In this slide, I'm going to talk about frog farming. So each frog can lay up to 20,000 eggs in one cycle, so it can be farmed really quickly. However, in nature, only 10 of these 20,000 eggs survive to a marketable size. So, family use specific pond system to raise the survival rate of this only 10 up to maybe around thousands. So, to farm the frog, the farmer usually use big pond for the mature frog, the hatching pond for the egg, and the glowing pond for the tadpoles. In the glowing pond, the tadpoles is separated into smaller groups because the tadpole is cannibalistic. And this is the species complex of the Hoplobatlacus tubulosus. In the left picture, you see the Chinese tiger frog or the wild type, and on the right side, you see the Thailand tiger frog or the bread type. So when you're on the field, you cannot tell which one is which, like which one is the wild type or which one is the bread type. We usually can tell which one is the wild type, which one is the bread type using molecular marker like site B or other genes. Chinese tiger frog or the wild type is listed in sites as the only class 2 frog that is nationally protected in China while the Thailand tiger frog is sold in the market as food. In this slide you see the previous studies done by Alam et al. They study the complete mitochondrial genome of animals from different genus like from Euphilictes, Sopobatlaku, Spesifaria, Limnonectes, and they use Velophilax as the outgroup. And from what they do, they found that duplication of the ND5 genes and the control region in Hoplobatlacus. This one is Hoplobatlacus tigerinus. And the other studies is done by Pansop et al. So they study the site B genes in Thailand tiger frogs. So this one is specific to the Hoplobatlacus tuberculosus in Thailand population. And in the study, they find two distinct clades of the Hoplobatlacus tuberculosus. 
So they, they name it clade A and clade B. The clade A is the population from Western, Central, and Southern Thailand, while the clade B is the population from Northern and Northeastern Thailand. And this is the research question. So is there a species complex in Hopobatlacus rubulosus? And this is the objective of the study. First is to find out if there is a species complex in Hopobatlacus tubulosus. And then is to separate the Hopobatlacus tubulosus from Thailand and Chinese population so they don't interbreed. Because the Chinese population is a protected species and we don't want it to produce defect hybrid. This is the research outline for the study. First is the frog collection. We collect the frogs from Chinese and Thailand population and then for the mitochondrial gene we use site B. From this site B gene we will do a phylogenetic analysis. And for the nuclear genes we are going to use NCX1, REC1, ROT and third genes. From these genes we are going to do a phylogenetic analysis also. And then we use the whole mitochondrial genome. From the whole mitochondrial genome we are going to do a mtDNA genome mapping and also phylogenetic analysis. And last is the ND5 protein. From the ND5 protein, we are going to do a structural comparison from the Chinese population and the Thailand population. This is the big experiment design. So from this diagram, we can separate it into the pro collection and the analysis in the laboratory. This is the experiment designed for the frog collection. So the Chinese population is we got from the community of forest administrative bureau of Tsinghua, while the Thailand population we buy it from the market. After we get the two frogs, we are going to extract the DNA. And this is the experiment designed for the amplification and analysis. After we get the DNA from the DNA extraction, we are going to amplify the DNA. We get mitochondrial DNA and the nuclear DNA. From the mitochondrial DNA, we are going to do the site B analysis and the ND5 protein and gene analysis. From the ND5, we are going to get the protein model, 3, 3D protein model, and a phylogenetic tree like the site B. Well, from the nuclear DNA, we are only going to do a phylogenetic tree from the nuclear genes. And this is the site B phylogeny analysis. 565 pair of site B genes were used in this analysis. The genes contain 231 variable sites and 197 parsimony informative sites. The phylogenetic tree is constructed with neighbor joining analysis. The analysis used Kimura 2 parameter model using gamma distribution with 6 as its gamma parameter and 1000 time bootstrap application. This is the result of the site B analysis. From the phylogenetic tree they construct from the site B genes of the Hopobatlacus tubulosus, they managed to find two clades the first clade is the Northern Thailand and Chinese population, while the second clade is the Southern, Western, and Central Thailand and Chinese population. The divergence between the two clades is 11.5%. And this is the discussion about the site B analysis. From the phylogenetic tree we see earlier, we can see that the Northern Thailand and the Chinese population is included in one clade. That may be because the Northern Thailand with China is close and the population managed to do some breeding and is more closely related than the Southern Thailand. So we refer to the Southern Thailand clade as the Thailand tiger frog and the Northern Thailand clade with the Chinese tiger frog. Next, I'm going to talk about the nuclear genes phylogeny analysis. In the nuclear genes phylogeny analysis, we have the ROT, TIR, and REC1 genes taken from the gene bank. Well, from the samples, we only get the NCX1 sequence. 
the sequence is then aligned and we try to find the divergence within the population. This is the result of the nuclear genes analysis. From all the nuclear genes, we found low divergence, which is below 1%, only 0.7% in XCX1, 0.3% in REC1, 0.1% in ROT, and only 0.1% in TIR. And because the divergence is low below 1%, we cannot use this as the evidence of species complex. And now this is the method of full mitochondrial genome analysis. In the mitochondrial genome analysis, first we amplify the gene using PCR and LABCR, and then after we amplify it, the sequence is assembled to create a genome map like the picture on the left. And after that, we see the divergence in the gene for each type of gene. First is the protein coding gene, the control gene, and then the tRNA. After that, the whole mitochondrial genome sequence is used to create a phylogenetic tree. This is the result of the whole mitochondrial genome analysis. In this slide, you can see the genome map we get from the mitochondrial genes. So the mitochondrial genome is 20 kilobits per long, which only contain 13 types of protein coding genes and 2 RNA. The rest of the gene is actually the RNA and the loop. In this slide, we see the notable divergence between Cobalt-Lactose tuberculosis plate type and wild type. First, in the protein coding genes, we see the nucleotide divergence between plate type and wild type is 11.2% for CO3 and 24.5% for ND5 gene. While in the amino acid divergence, we see 2.1% divergence of CO3 and 28.3% of divergence in ATP8 genes. For the liposomal RNA, we found 7.6% of divergence in 12R RNA and 6.6% of divergence in 16R RNA. The control region and the tRNA show little to no divergence, so we don't include it in this slide. This is the discussion for the whole mitochondrial genome analysis. In this slide, you can see the phylogenetically constructed from the whole mitochondrial genome of the globulosidae. In the picture, you can see that the hoplobatlacus globulosus well type is shown as the sister plate to the hoplobatlacus globulosus plate type, while the hoplobatlacus genus is the sister plate to euphalictis. And now we are going to talk about duplicated and relocated sequence in the whole mitochondrial genome. First is the duplication of ND5D loop in Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis wild type and Hoplobatlacus tigurinus. So the ND5D loop duplication is identical but in Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis plate type is only similar. The duplicated control regions is almost identical sequences in all populations, so the divergence is little to none. While the arranged tRNA previously only found in Hoplobatlacus tigurinus and Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis well type was also found in Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis plate type. And the last method is the ND5 genes and protein analysis. So first, we perform a motif scan on the ND5 protein of the Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis wild type, red type, and Tigerinus as an art group. After that, we reconstruct a three-dimensional protein model. The model is then compared to see if there is any difference in its structure. Here are the results. In this slide, we see the domain structure of the ND5 protein for Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis. As we say earlier that the ND5 protein duplication is not identical in Hoplobatlacus tuberculosis plate type and there is a difference in transmembrane domain and the oxidoreductase Q1S domain. If you see in this picture, A is the first ND5 protein domain structure while B is the second ND5 protein domain structure. From the picture, you see that there is a transmembrane difference in a and B, and the A have an 
obviously delay to place Q1 as well. B doesn't have it. Well, on the Hopobatlacus lugulosus wild type and Hopobatlacus tigerinus, the C and D is repeated two times. So it's like it double the ND5 domain like this and like this again. Well, on this slide, you see the tertiary protein model of the Hopobatlacus lugulosus spread type, wild type, and Hopobatlacus tigerinus. A is the first ND5 protein of the bread type, while B is the second protein of ND5 in the bread type. Each, each one of them have two beta sheet, while the first ND5 have only 22 alpha helices, while the second have 23 alpha helix. The second ND5 is more similar to the and the five of the Hopobatlacus is the wild type because the wild type also have 23 alpha helix. While the Hopobatlacus tigerinus and the five have 21 alpha helix. And this is the discussion of the protein model analysis. So even though the ND5 in the bread type is different like ND5-1 and ND5-2, it is actually quite similar with 80% of similarity in the structure. This suggests that maybe that the ND5 has a common ancestor gene, which is the ND5 gene. The ND5 is mutated into two different genes in the Hopobatlacus lugulosus spread type. While even though the gene is different, the protein structure is actually quite similar with only one alpha helix different. This is the conclusion of the research article. So in the research article, we found the high divergence in site B genes, around 13.8% between bread type and wild type. We also find high divergence in whole mitochondrial genome of bread type and wild type, around 14%. The ND5 protein model and domain show divergence in the bread type because in the bread type, the ND5 protein is duplicated only similarly, while in the well, type is duplicated 100% similar. And with this evidence, we can say that there is two plates in Hopobatacus lupulosus, the bread type and the wild type. This is my comment for the research article. So from this study, we can see using molecular techniques confirms that the two populations should be different species because it is put into two different plates. But it is recommended to conduct more studies using morphological markers like maybe the SPL of its population or other morphology. So one of the morphological parameters that we can use is also color of the skin. So the color of the skin of brown and green. It is recommended to conduct genetic study using like green frogs and brown frogs so this is actually what i do right now i study the site b of green and brown frogs in thailand population and that is all for my presentation thank you very much